That was a beautiful invitation. Wow. Well, as usual, I, I went to Concepts Humor Department to find what was going on. And I was flipping through the pages, and I came across an old one that, that Jim really, really liked. And I thought, you know what? I haven't used it in a long time, so I, I opted for that one. It's a story about a couple named Albert and Mabel. Now, what you got to do is go way back. We're talking the 1920s, and we're out in the Midwest where they're doing farming and, and whatever. It's just one of those rural communities. And every year they would have a county fair, and all the different farmers and people would come, and they'd gather, and they'd have new events and things that would happen. So you've got to remember it's the 1920s, and most people in those days hadn't even seen an airplane, let alone ridden in one. And they used to have something called barnstorming. The guys would come in in their biplanes and they'd come in and, and they'd give people rides and stuff and they'd charge money and everybody was really thrilled because, I mean, it was a very new event. Every year, Albert wanted to get a ride in that airplane. And Mabel would look at him and say, Albert, a ride in that airplane costs $10. And ten dollars is ten dollars. You can't do that. Years go by and it's starting to move along and, and Albert's really getting restless. You're getting kind of old and, you know, they're an older couple. And it's because county fair time and they get to the county fair and the first thing Albert does is look at that airplane and he starts heading in that direction. And Mabel, of course, she starts putting the brakes on. Hey, Albert, you know, we can't be doing that. You know, it's expensive. It's this, and the pilot was listening to this older couple go at it. And he goes, he says, look, he says, I'll make you two an offer. He says, I'll take you up. And if you don't squeal and holler and have the best time you ever had, I'll give you the ride for free. Well, Mabel couldn't turn that down, and Albert was right ready to go. So they get in the airplane, and they get up, and the pilot takes off, and he starts giving them this joy ride, and he goes up, and he does a loop, and then he does an alien arm roll, and he goes a hammerhead stall. Doesn't hear a thing. So he goes back, does a harder loop, a bigger, and comes another, as hard as he could. Not a peep. He lands the plane, and he gets out, and Albert was getting down, and he looked at him and says, Wow, that's really unusual. That's never happened before. Nobody, you didn't even make a sound. And Albert looked at him and said, Well, I, I started to say something when Mabel fell out. <laughs> But then again, $10 is $10. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk about perception today. And I'm going to invite you into a world that we all share. It's just in varying degrees. We overlook it a lot of us. Some of us don't pay any attention to it at all. It's not like it isn't there. You're just not paying attention to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get you to take a look at something you can't see. Wow. And I'm going to point it out to you. And then I'll demonstrate it for you. How about that? And Rusty, snoring is frowned upon. <laughs> New reality is a very interesting creation that happens. It just does. But it can't happen unless you make room for it. The principles that are used in flight have been here since time began, especially on this planet. The energy that's created, the low pressure underneath a wing of an airplane or a bird or whatever has been there all along. As man grew and got more insight, more understanding, he was trying to find different ways to do it. And you'll notice back a few hundred years ago, Leonardo da Vinci actually designed a flying machine. 
Now, he was way ahead of his time. The circumstances hadn't happened yet. It didn't become a reality, but the idea was there. It became a reality when the rest of everything else caught up with it, and it could now, along with technology and understanding and perception, all be brought together to where we can create a situation where we have man flight, a whole different idea. 70 years ago, I mean, you think back that, that if you started right after the, the turn of the century, we just barely learned to fly. By the end of the 1960s, we were on the moon. A new reality was created almost overnight when you look at time. And it needed to be created in such a way that we would allow it to happen. What I want to look about and talk about now is energy. And I, I want you to perceive in your mind that everything, and I mean everything that you can see, touch, taste, feel, is energy. It's just exchanged in a different way or in a different form. It doesn't matter what it is. If you walk out into the sun, you feel the heat, it's energy. As I breathe in and out, it's energy. As you touch this table, it's really condensed energy in a different form. It's all the same except put in a different form. What a lot of us are beginning to allow to happen now and understanding is something called dimensional worlds. Now they've been here all along. They've been utilized and worked with by everything that, that has ever lived. But at the same point in time, it hasn't been till recently until mankind has started to accept what they are and what they represent to him. We're starting to come into an era where people are, are looking at things differently than they used to. My background is in bioenergy flow. I did my internship up at the Ding Medical Clinic, but two years at a place, it was very, very interesting. The gentleman that ran it was a medical doctor, taught at UCLA, but he was a fourth generation oriental surgeon and acupuncturist. And so what you got was an incredible different blending of energies and understanding and the opportunity to share. So during that two years, I got to see and study and interact and start working with energy in a way I'd never even perceived before, or at least was able to utilize and work with at that level. What it did in that process was create a reality where in my mind, the world started to become a big sea of energy. I mean, I know that we were just talking about all those different things moving around, but if you move your hand through the air, you can feel the drag from the air but you'd be very surprised if you just touch energy and flow, touch someone's vibration, move it through. You can also feel that energy. That energy not only exists, but it's the energy that is exchanged between all living matter, between all things during communication, between all things in their expressions, no matter what it's done. When it's processed right through your body on a daily basis, it's called bioenergy flow. A few years ago, they started to see it, thousands of years ago, the Orientals were working with it. But in the last, oh, I'd say 35 years, something called holistic health began to emerge. And they started to understand and realize that body, mind, and spirit were all connected, that it was all part of a complete package. And it was this blending that allowed things to happen and that your life and your health and your expression and your feelings are all tied to this energy and how it flows through you. How you utilize it, how you work with it, how you express yourself with it, and how you understand how it, it works within you. Because if you don't understand it and you ignore it and you don't pay attention to it, you can get it out of balance very easily. Even if you do understand it, you can get it out of balance, but it's a whole lot easier to bring it back into balance. You're connected to a physical body with something called an etheric aura, which is another form of energy. But it's a consciousness connected to a living tissue that creates a human being. It brings your spiritual consciousness into an energy consciousness and connects it to a physical body.
And as you work within this dimension and as you start to see it, your mind will begin to, to see almost like a, the sea of energy and how when people talk and they interact and they connect and communicate with one another, this energy is exchanged. How it's understood and how it's related to it and whatnot is on autopilot with most people. A few people that, the new trend, a lot more people and more and more people are beginning to understand it, see it for what it is and allow their perception to interact with it. But each and every one of us use it every single day and we use it on default settings most of the time. You go through a process of using it because you have been experiencing it ever since you were, got on the planet. And so you quit utilizing it and looking at it and it just became something else you did and then you began to look past it. It was just something that was there and you quit paying attention to it directly. You started paying attention to it indirectly. And what's happening now is the whole trend is to be get an understanding of that, wait a minute, it is really there. Bring it back into your mind, bring it back into your consciousness, bring back an understanding of it so that you can utilize it and work with it and express who and what you are through it and because of it. Whenever you see an exchange of energy between two people, it's there. It's something that happens and interacts with and works with. You communicate with it so much and don't even realize it. Your etheric aura, whenever it comes out, reaches out and touches someone. When I look at you, my energy comes over and touches your energy. There immediately is an exchange that takes place whether you're conscious of it or not. You play the game all the time and most of you have done this game. You've all played it. If you've never been in a coffee shop, well, you've probably paid it, played it anyway. But the game's coffee shop. Okay, you go into a crowded coffee shop and the waitress takes your order. And because it's crowded, she's late. She doesn't get there right away, she's busy. And you get bored and you start looking around the coffee shop and you see somebody over there that kind of catches your eye and interesting and the second that you focus on them, suddenly they turn right around to look at you. I mean, instantaneous. And right away there's an incredible amount of communication that takes place. It's either a smile or, hmm, get out of my energy. But there is an exchange that happens and it's almost immediate and it happens to everybody. What happens is at that moment, the energy went over and touched that person and instinctually, they felt it. They simply reacted to it. The communication was established and then it told you quickly whether it was an intrusion or not. And when you watch, you get out into nature or you get out into the people in the country where they're a lot more laid back and things aren't so intense, the energy is a lot more slow moving, easy going, kind of laid back. The more you get people densely compacted together, the more that energy gets compressed and the more energy, little sources of energy, individual people get pushed together. And the energy shifts there too. There's a totally different feeling from being out in the country or being in the big city. If you walk down the street in the big city, people go out of their way not to see you, even though they're looking at you. It's like they go like this, you walk by, they look this way. Why? They don't want to connect with that energy. They don't want to deal with it. You're going by so many people that if you try to get into that energy on an ongoing basis, it would drive you nuts. You can't do it. So the first thing you think of do to do is to find a way not to do it. The second best thing is when you say good morning and don't even mean it. Hi. <laughs> now we've had an exchange of energy. We got it over with and it's done. <laughs> the whole idea was okay, what have I got to do with it? I needed to communicate. I had to say something. I went into default mode, gave a canned response, and was on my way. But the energy for that moment was exchanged whether you liked it or not. So you pushed it off so that it didn't, wasn't there if it didn't have to. Yet at the same time, if you go back out to the country where people have had a chance to connect a different way, they'll go out of the way to say hello. It's very interesting. They just kind of high and they'll stop and talk and just for something to do. It, and it, when you go down to where the country isn't so intense, I, it was interesting, but I, I did some traveling down in Central and South America. And it was so different down there. When you get on the bus in Costa Rica, at least when I was down there, I don't know how much they've gotten compacted since then. But there's a bus there with all these empty seats. Now, if you got on a bus up here, 
and you're sitting here and there's empty seats, the first thing they'll do is find another seat over here so they don't have to share it. But interestingly enough, you get on the bus there, the first thing they'll come over, sit down next to you and start a conversation just to share the energy because they're looking at wanting that interaction to take place. Because to them, it's a chance to share, but if it's pushed at you all the time, like in a big city, it's something that becomes a problem that you have to deal with, not a problem so much a reality. Because the, the circumstances are, are, are different and the intensity is different. When people share any emotion, any feeling, any way that they interact with each other, that energy is exchanged and done at the same time. I'm going to give a couple of demonstrations in a minute, but I'll tell you a couple of stories first. I got two volunteers. I was smart enough to pick them ahead of time. <laughs> I want you to listen to this story. I'm going to tell you two stories, both of them are true. And we're talking about perception. The first story is when I went to help a friend move. Actually, what I did was I went to help a friend help their mother move. And we've all done that, where some friends come along, you know, and they want you to help move along, just like I'm going to pick on Rusty here pretty quick, to give you a hand to pack things up and move along and get them from one place to another. So this, this lady that, that asked me to help her went home and back to where her mom was and they were packing her up because she was moving to a smaller place, downsizing and the different things that were going on. And we're going through stuff and part of it's just dusty and old junk and whatnot. And I found this little old raggedy teddy bear. One eye was missing. It looked like it had been through World War III. And the first thing most people would have done was taken it and just thrown it in the trash. I picked it up and the lady walked in the room just as I had it and the second that she saw it, you could watch her face change. The mood, the shift, the energy, it just shifted and changed. For that moment, that bear represented a consciousness, a memory, an energy exchange that she had had as a young child and it brought it all forward. And to her, it was a very special item she just glowed. To somebody else, it was just a teddy bear. And when I shared that energy with you right now, every single one of you felt it. Did you notice how the energy in the room shifted the second I went there? We're exchanging and moving energy right now. I'm working with you. I'm getting this energy moving and it's back and forth. Now, it's all a way of communicating, but sharing. And how you handle it and what you do with it makes a lot of difference. I told a joke at the beginning. Now I told the joke to get energy moving. Then I put a couple of sentences out. Then I picked on Rusty. Did you notice I poked a little humor at him? But the second that I had the energy moving, I let a little time go by and then I picked on him. I did it in a friendly, warm way. And what it did is it took the room and made it personalized. Suddenly I was talking to a room full of friends. The energy was moving at a different level because that ice that was there that needed to get broken got shifted to somebody in the room that you could look at and it was exchanged back and forth that fast. But it's understanding it and what it is and choosing to do it that made it my tool, and I utilized it. Can I talk these two ladies, Jane and Pam, to please come forward? They're now knighted. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, I need you to, to come on over here too. The, what they're going to do is be able to catch you on the camera. But now, as you touch anyone's energy, or if I touch your energy right now, I chose two people that I know are sensitive enough to be able to feel it. But at this moment right now, can I get you to separate just a little bit, move over here so that they, we're doing it separated. Now, do you feel the energy as I'm touching you? Yes. Okay. At that point, if I touch your energy, I can move up and down and match it. 
as I slide into your energy at that point, there's an exchange that takes place. It starts to move back and forth. It's moving it right there is when it's moving. I can raise it and start to touch your higher consciousness, or I can turn right around, settle it right back down, and just zero in at a very fine level. Okay, now you hold for a second. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with you. Clear the energy up here just for a moment. Touch your energy. There you are. Step in and out. Settle it down again. You feel the energy start to move back and forth. You can raise it if I'm gonna to touch you at a higher consciousness level or relax down and focus and fine tune. Felt that too? What I did was when you interact with people, thank you ladies, go ahead and sit down. Which, when you interact with people, connect, communicate, or whatever, that energy comes together right away. Either it merges quickly and easily, or it doesn't. Either you have a rapport, or there's a clash that's going on. There's a, a cushion that happens or doesn't happen. Once you become aware of it and start to understand it, you feel that energy come. You feel that it's there, and when you start to touch it and you're consciously aware of it, you can utilize some instantaneous tools just exactly like I did with Rusty. The second you feel an energy, it's either warm or flowing or it isn't. So you either shut yourself down on autopilot or pull it in so that it's not there, but or at the same time, you can open it up and let it flow. What I did in just a few seconds was touch an energy, match that vibration, and create an immediate rapport. Within a matter of seconds, I suddenly was interacting. And the rapport I'm talking about is the rapport that you get when you're dancing with someone and you're in sync together. That energy that shifts back and forth. You can tell when you're in and when you're not, you find the other person getting their feet stepped all over. It's one of those situations where you can connect with it. Either you're connected or you're not. But if you know it's there and you can utilize it, you can make an adjustment and allow something like that to happen so that you can open up the door to a rapport. Some people might find that useful. Depends on what your motives are, but it can work. Now, when I touched into that energy and raised it up, the next thing I did was touch an octave here, which was their higher self. The connection that I wasn't just dealing with this person, I was connecting with them up here. So suddenly you can pull the whole energy into a different dimension. You're now being objective and connected and looking and interacting at two levels simultaneously because now the, the need that you needed to share spiritually, the thing that you brought together for that meeting, for that connection is now open and being exchanged openly during this meeting, during this connection. And you're aware of it. You've been doing it all along on default. The difference now is you're aware of it. You can utilize it, make sense out of it. You can also find that if you want to break the ice with someone, touching this energy and coming to this part of their self and connecting up here is like letting this beautiful, calming, motivational energy slide into the energy that you're exchanging. And what you're really simply doing is up in the, increasing this a little bit so that you can bring it down. It helps the energy to start flowing. It allows this, that whatever this uh, struggle was that was happening, to be calmed down and to be utilized. The third thing I did, nothing up my sleeves. I did it in public in front of everybody, but in just a moment, and I asked you specifically and you, if you felt that third touch, I had gone from connect, higher self, to intimate that fast. When I came in and touched your energy at that level, I zoomed right in, still my mind focused and identified with it. When you can connect and interact consciously at will at those three levels, do you realize what your communication difference is? What you can utilize and work with? Do you realize that you're using the same energy when you connect to the universe, when you start to pull it? Excuse me. When you pull it into your heart, into your mind, it's that connection. You take that same energy, adjust it, identify with it, work with it, let it become part of your mind, almost as though it's through osmosis. 
It just comes and becomes there. The energy is flowing in your mind and ideas come. New realities start to happen. Your perception changes and how you see the world, how you see other people, how you connect with them, how you relate to them, all starts to shift. It just happens all on its own on one hand because you created a new reality, literally. You open the door to that dimension and that dimension to you now is real. All you had to do was start pointing out things that you already felt in exchange. You couldn't see them and most people didn't pay attention to them. But the second that they're pointed out and directed or allowed to see in that sort of a situation, not only do you become aware of them, but you can all remember how it's worked out and how you've utilized it or not utilized it in the past on a daily basis. And the moments, the special moments, the times when you were trying to share just that special moment with a friend or with a family and felt the energy that was present. You can recreate it in your mind. You can touch that point of intimacy. You can touch that consciousness. You can interact and relate. And all you have to do is allow that reality to start to become part of your conscious mind and then start to work with it. You'd be incredible. Your, your mind, your higher self, will start to kick in on default there too. It will start to give you the answers and you'll start to find it and interact with it. It's like if, if you jump in and start swimming after a while, you get a little better at this and something because you've learned what's going on. But you, all you had to do was get in the water to learn. Well, what you're doing is getting into the energy that you're already expending, but you're doing it with an understanding and a consciousness. And it all has to do, once again, with perception. What you see, what your connection to the universe is and what's right or wrong for you as an individual. I'll use another story, true one. And it sees about two individuals. One of them was named Walter and the other was named Arthur. They were very good friends. They were both businessmen, both very successful. In one afternoon, Walter came over to see Arthur and says, hey, come on, I want you to take a ride with me. I want to show you something. This is really great. You got to see it. So he got in the car and they took off. And he's driving and 15 minutes goes by and he starts going, well, where are we going? And Walter's going, just relax, I'll get you there. Half an hour goes by. Art's going, where are we going? And Walter's, don't worry about it. We're on our way there. 45 minutes goes by. They're in the middle of nowhere. All of a sudden, Walter pulls over and stops. And he gets out, and so Arthur gets out. And Walter looks at Arthur and says, look at this. They're in the middle of nowhere. And Arthur looks at him and says, what are you talking about? We're in the middle of nowhere. And Walter goes, yeah, we are. And Art just looked at him and shook his head. But do you know the interesting thing that happened that afternoon? Arthur, Art Linkletter, took a ride with his buddy, Walt Disney, out into the country to take a look at an opportunity. And that day, Art Linkletter turned down Walt Disney for a share in Disneyland. <laughs> a real story. The whole idea was the perception. One person, all they could see was a dreamer. And the, and the other one, all they could see was a dream. I'm going to close with a quote that we're going to twist a little bit here. The, the quote is, what you see is what you get. The other quote, as it works, what you allow yourself to see is what you really get.